What's going on guys? I'm Brian and today we will be taking a look at something that I've been dying to look at and that is the performance of the RX 5700 XT with both the Ryzen 5 1600 AF and the Ryzen 5 3600. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I've been looking for that line where I should stop, you know, recommending the 1600 AF and we may have just found it. All right, so without wasting any time, let's jump into what we are working with. The test bench that we utilize has the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max motherboard, a 16 gigabyte kit of 3200 megahertz speed memory, a Hyper 212 volt black edition to cool the CPU, and then the Gigabyte RX 5700 XT gaming OC graphics card. As always, I will be leaving a link to everything I mentioned today in the description box below. So if you're interested in the stuff that we're working with today, go ahead and check out down there. So for testing the Ryzen 5 1600 AF and 3600 were tested at stock as well as overclock. Both overclocks were very modest with the 1600 AF being overclocked to four gigahertz and the 3600 being overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz. And in all scenarios, the RX 5700 XT was tested at stock as well as with a small overclock um, target of 2100 megahertz on the core and 1800 megahertz on the memory. I tested seven games using high or max settings at 1080p as well as 1440p. And although I would have loved to include 4K results in this video, I actually don't have a way to test 4K. So I wasn't able to get those results for you guys in this video. I wanna also mention that I didn't bother testing at 1080p with the chips overclocked. And you'll probably be able to guess after you take a look at the charts, um, but we will be talking about that more or after I show you guys the benchmarks. And with all that said, here are my results. So I really have a lot to say about the 5700 XT in regards to these two CPUs, but I am gonna try to keep it short for you guys so I don't bore you. I think what I'm about to say is pretty important and I do think it's gonna help out some of you guys when it comes to picking out what CPU and GPU you should be getting. First thing I have to mention is that I spent hours upon hours doing these tests because some of the results I had didn't make much sense to me at all, at least at first. I've been trying to answer the question, when is like the 1600 AS F irrelevant. Like when should I stop recommending the 1600 AF? You know, which graphics card is that card? And I kind of think that this is it. The results I got for this video more or less answered that question for me. The 5700 XT is about $100 more than the 5600 XT. But if you watched like the previous 5600 XT CPU comparison video that I did, and then you watch this one, you may have noticed that there are a few games where at 1080p, 
the 5700 XT and the 5600 XT perform very, very similarly. And naturally the question comes out to be why? Why would the 5600 XT, which is $100 cheaper than the 5700 XT perform the same as it in 1080p gaming? And well, to sum it up, as I alluded to a moment ago, it's a CPU bottleneck. The 1600 AF clearly bottlenecks the 5700 XT in some titles at 1080p. Hitman 2 is a perfect example of this. We see the RX 5600 XT technically outperforming the 5700 XT while using the 1600 AF. And now this is totally margin of error. It's like one FPS between them. But I did retest the retest the retest the 5700 XT and at 1080p, that's where the results fell. Now, if you swap out that 1600 AF and you threw in the 3600, all of a sudden I saw a 19% improvement in performance on the RX 5700 XT, seeing the average FPS going from 90 to 107. The other thing I wanted to mention is about performance in Fortnite, and it's more to clarify why I think the 5700 XT performed worse than the 5600 XT in Fortnite at 1080p while using the 16 AF. You would think that they kind of like performed identically if the CPU had a bottleneck, but that's not what we got in our results. And since I sold my 5600 XT to buy a 5700 XT, I can't retest the 5600 XT to see if my suspicions are correct. And let me take a second to explain. For those of you who play the game, you may notice that they just released season three of chapter two and this brought along a ton of changes and it seems like from my research online that a lot of people are seeing their fps drop a little bit with this update and again i as i just said i did sell my 5600 xt in order to buy the 5700 xt so i can't go back and i can't retest the 5600 xt on season three to confirm my suspicion that the season three is actually causing the drop versus the 5700 XT just not performing as well in the game. So this is where I kind of wanted to lean out to you guys and ask you if you have a 5600 XT and the 1600 AF or the 3600, if you could benchmark it for me and see where your results fall and comment below, I would really, really, really appreciate it. And just so you know, I typically test at the Epic preset with absolutely no shadows. Uh -huh. And so there really is a lot more I could say about the comparison that I did here today. But those were the two things that I found were most important to mention here in like the, you know, conclusion. And I think the results are clear enough to say that the line in the sand is right here for my question that I've been asking since I started this series. If you want to get the 5700 XT, I think you need to go with something at the 3600 level or better. The 3100 or the 3300X may work, but I actually don't have them and I haven't tested them. So I don't know if they're gonna be that much better the 1600 AF in this scenario, or if they're gonna perform similarly, or since their IPC is better, it'll perform as well as the 3600, which I would guess, but until I get those you know, actually in hand, I can't really confirm those results. And truly the bottleneck on the 1600 AF isn't all that bad with the 5700 XT, but the problem is, is that the 5700 XT is literally pushing the 1600 AF to the limit. And you can see that if you go back and you look at the GTA 5 benchmarks, like the actual results that I had, you could see that the 0.1% lows were, I think it was like 10, which really shows you that, you know, this chip is getting pushed, you know, hardcore. And I actually re-ran that test several times I mean, just to confirm like that it wasn't just something weird that was happening with my system. I uninstalled drivers, I reinstalled, you know, drivers. I did all sorts of things to try to, <laughs> try to verify that it was, in fact, that the, the CPU was just bogged down way too much. If there are any other CPU GPU combinations you would like me to face off, let me know in the comments below. I am slowly, as I've said before, gathering as much tech, as much, you know, CPUs and GPUs as I can so I can test it for you guys. So, you know, I really, you know, knowing what you guys want to see next is really, really, really important to me. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more tech content just like this. I am also considering doing like a Q Q and A. So if you have any questions that you want me to answer, just drop them down below for the Q and A. Um, I figured maybe next week, next Friday, I'll post a video, just a quick Q and A of you know any questions uh, or generally questions I see from you guys or any questions you guys had or post in this particular video. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys, and I'll see you later.